big risk. But here, I think this matchup is going to be very exciting. I think so. NIP have been playing some great Counter-Strike. It's been really fun to watch this. Again, young team playing so well. And Na'Vi, I think, you know, Chad, you know, put it really well. It's, it's because we wanted to do so well that you get so frustrated when it's not working out at all. There's Boomich taking a bit of damage, trying to defend the A bomb site. Simple inside a connector, but no one's coming from middle. Plopski might be in a couple of seconds, but the bomb goes down. So now Plopski's in no hurry. He can just wait and hang back here and make sure that he's listening, counting the footsteps, and getting all the information they need. It's a good shot from Simple. Might put a little bit more pressure on Plopski to start to move, but again, no one's even near the bomb at this point in time. And that's an excellent kill taking down Flamey Res will fall next in line, and let's see. Plopski, they're just going to try and ignore him. I actually don't mind that, but you have to go quick then. And I mean real quick, otherwise you're going to run out of time. Simple will pick up Hampus, and there comes Plopski. He's going to get shot down. That was a swing from Electronic, and somehow they get that retake done. Perfecto is there with the defuse kit. That is absolutely not an easy retake for Na'Vi to negotiate. No, but they did a great job of it. I mean, they were able to pick off NIP players before they're even beginning the retake. This one right here is quite nice. Twist out in the open. This is another good one. Electronic. So they're getting two to three kills before they actually begin to retake the bomb site. before they even get close to defusing the bomb. And that neutralizes a lot of the plans of NIP. You want to have those crossfires. You want to have those bait setups. Really, you want those traps to be sprung. And the fact that NI or, or Navi is able to pick off a couple before it begins, like, really neutralizes the setups that they had. Still, Plant comes in. Plopsky and Rez going to have AK-47s, and they're looking for this push from Simple. Yeah, they are. That could actually be really dangerous. We'll see. Bit of an off-angle here for Simple. Might be hard to check unless there's a flashbang to set it up, which it feels like there is. I think Nork is holding one, so let's see if it's going to work. No, that's a smoke instead. Sorry. Rez goes down. That would have been a great moment for a little bit of a flashbang. Plopski will get one in return, but he does take a lot of damage for it, so... Still has to be real careful up there with the other AK-47. Don't know if he wants to give it over to Nork instead. Oh, Electronic is watching for just that. A lot of faith and trust in Flamey, who then gets abandoned. So that's really unfortunate. Another kill for the AK-47s from NIP. Powerful second round coming out into a three-on-three -three we go. Just under a minute remaining in the round. Little bit of utility for the ninjas to use. They've got two smokes, two flashes, and a Molotov. So not bad, all things considered, so far for NIP. Still with a good shot to take this. And look at Navi. They've actually rotated a second player over to the B bomb site. They'll play retake on A, which I think is a good call. That's a, that's a bomb site you can retake quite easily, as we saw in the pistol round. It's catwalk where the action is going to be. I mean, those AKs, though, coming into the fight at B, if, if they get just the right entry, one good headshot, it's done. Electronic has to try and stay hidden. I don't know why he wants to go for that fight. Good headshot, Ooh. though, from Perfecto. And now that leaves Plopski in a very, very bad position. He does have armor and head armor, but he's low on health, and that MP9 will take him down. So that's, a, that's some good action. They're going to steal one of those AK-47s. That will help out a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's a decent round. Could have been, Could have been much worse for Na'Vi. Yeah, they really could have been. I mean, you have to say great shots from Perfecto with the SMG, even at long range towards Catwalk, able to grab one more headshot. This is that's a really unfortunate setup for Flamey, but this was this was well played from Navi. The second the rotation, the second player at the B bomb site, the player at A, he's playing more centralized in towards window room. That was well handled once it got put into the three on three. So now we've got Deagles, although. Not to be underestimated, we've seen some ridiculous deagle action coming out from the NIP squad. You know, Hampus had a series of triple kills for no good reason in some of the last oh, yeah. games we've seen. Uh, but Rez also. Rez uh, as well. Yeah, worth really paying attention to, isn't it? Yeah, these deagles can be can be very violent. <laughs> and we'll see if NIP, NIP can pull another one off against Navi here. Slow progression. This is nice, though. At least what they've accomplished in rounds two and now three is Simple's gotten aggressive in both these rounds. Last round towards top mid, he went one for one. This time he's dropped without any kind of a frag whatsoever. So at least if you're NIP, you've been able to handle the early aggression from Simple in these rounds. And if, if you're not able to handle that, he's just going to go wild, right? He's just going to be able to do whatever he wants. And he's only going to get more and more confident and aggressive. So it's good that they've kind of put him in his place, so to speak, early on in this game, so they don't have to deal with that down the road. Yeah, you or definitely... at least deal with it as much. Yeah, it's, it's always a question, right? Like, how long will it take him to, to warm up and really start to uh, to have more of an impact? And I agree, if you could take him down some of the early rounds, you're going to gonna maybe try and delay that as much as you can. Perfecto's over here with the Molotov, so if he has time... And he's actually walking back, which is kind of dangerous. Flamey's now going to be 
Also turning around, the timing for these turnarounds here for Na'Vi could actually be the end of them. This is really dangerous now. Flamey out in the open, and he's going to go down to Nork, man. I can't believe both of them managed to, to just miss the fact that NIP were up in the hall, always there. That's so unlikely. I Well, the the other side of that, too, is, is why is everyone turning? Why is everyone taking their eyes off? Why are we feeling uncomfortable when there's no action, there's no noise anywhere else on the map? Two good kills on the retake. Still a great chance for Na'Vi to take this round right back. It's going to be costly, Wait. but it's looking like they're going to do it. Nock has a chance. Yeah, and they know where he is now. Speaking of, I mean, just speaking of something that's really uncomfortable, why is NIP facing that hard in the middle of, you know, just in the beginning of the retake? There was three people going down uh, before they were even close to the bomb site. So, a couple of mistakes, I think, on NIP's side as well. But I think, yeah, the, the Na'Vi problem, looks like they both wanted to check for anyone going in a window, but that shouldn't have been their job in the B-bomb side. That's... I was going to say, that's the one thing I could think of, is if there was communication, someone might have said, hey, no one has eyes on window room or something like that. Yeah. You know, and that, that causes them to turn. But but both of them seemed very uncomfortable for some odd reason. Three to nothing for Na'Vi. And, I mean, that's a very nice round for NIP. The second round kind of falls flat with those forced-up AK-47s. Look, it's simple. Late aggression. Very late aggression. And NIP already pushing into connector. Hampus has two opening kills. Boomich finds one, but they know exactly where he is. Good kill, finally. But the bomb site is open. And another retake scenario for Navi. It's a good shot from Nork. And that probably will seal the round. Don't know if he could see. Yeah, he couldn't see the shadow or anything like that. But Flamey still in a one versus two. He's kind of anticipating it. That would have been an incredible headshot if you could have caught Plopsky jumping. What do you do from here on out if you're Flamey? You could put some pressure on them by, by maybe smoking off the bomb or smoking off CT's bomb, but not going to be worth it, I guess. He's picking up the AWP and just running away with it. So, good round from NIP. I, yep. I actually think it's not even that. I mean, Simple was late to the middle, you're right, but, but I think they thought that flashbang they put in the middle would have flashed way more people, and it didn't. Yeah, they, they had a lot of faith in that flashbang to be way more effective. I, I just found it odd that Simple, I, I think he was peering all the way up towards the base of Catwalk. He wasn't even kind of clearing deep in mid, which, I mean, obviously that's a wide swing, so it would have been a risk in its own right. Still, a uh, good round for Hampus, a good round for NIP. Finally, they're able to take the bomb site, and I like the call to stay from Flamey. You have the op, there's enough money on Boomich, there's enough money on Simple to get two rifles on the board. You can pass that AWP over, so you still have a pretty solid round in terms of the buy you're bringing to the table for Navi. And it's early in the half, so no reason to risk your entire economic structure in round four. No, not quite yet. I mean, it's a bit risky, but there's that all from simple early output from him. Going to be taking down Plopsky. Let's just see. Boomich is hiding inside of the bomb site, waiting for his Q. One good flashbang would maybe set him up for it. So far, he's seen no action by that Molotov up on the... Uh, that's the bomb. Yeah, that's the bomb down. Up on the balcony, he's finally going to be gone. That's a little bit of a risk, too. You could see now he has to worry about it, whereas a second ago, he didn't really have to. Deep grenade, a double nade landing on him, putting him down to two health. So now a three on four. Well, practically a three-on-three three with Boomich being that low, and plenty of time for NIP to make something of this. Yeah, that's it's a good they're able to recover the bomb so quickly. It looked like they wanted to fall back immediately upon that resistance, but with the bomb going down on res, that could have been a real issue. Navi in the process of rotating back to the B bomb site and being very cautious about it because they didn't have not had eyes on this part of the map for quite some time. Could have been a lurker in the holes as NIP readjusts across the map. So they've left Hampus alone at a ramp. And if he can find Boomich, and talk about, you know, a really thin margin, Boomich with two HP as the only player at A, if he was to go down, that would force a rotation away from the B bomb site. So that's why you're seeing them switch up. It's going to be Perfecto taking that stance. You can see it on the minimap. Boomich is just going to be watching for the push. If Hampus was going up against a two HP player, this fake would work so perfectly. Oh, they're walking through the smoke on the other side. That's actually really risky. Flamey, if he catches one of them, but he's not. Nock will get a quick headshot to take down Flamey. Still another two people here at the B bomb site. That could have nearly been a kill. Oh, it's so close for Simple to put that through. But now the fire at his feet is going to put him all the way down to 44. And this is going to be an issue. Hampus, look at it. He's quick up in the hallways. They've got one flashbang left on Nork as well. That could be a very good tool here in the afterplant. 
Three on three as the bomb is down. That CC is about to walk in a certain death. Boom, which is nothing to do there. Quick reaction from Simple, though, to take down Twist. Only really his shoulder showing at that point in time. A little bit of a challenge. Perfecto will take one down. And now Hampers up here in a one versus two. They could probably guess where he's coming from. But, oh, nice shot and nearly a follow-up. Simple will live, but no defuse kit. So he is going to no have to kit. make a run for it. That is so hard to deal with. Good triple, but they'll lose the round. Yeah, that is tough for Navi. No kit is just brutal. What a great round from NIP. That early, early obstacle at the A bomb site. I mean, remember, this is a four on five round, essentially. Even Boomich adding one more onto it. So this was a great round to start for him for Navi, but NIP is able to just kind of walk back across the map and find the kills they needed. The really key battle is that one with Flamey. He jumps up on the van. He thinks they, they, that smoke is going to cover everything, that he's going to be safe for a little bit, not realizing NIP had already walked through it or one player had come through. That's a big kill to get into the bomb site. I think those are the kinds of rounds. Watching NIP find a way to overcome adversity in a round like that is one of the things that has people starting to get a little bit excited about this team, a little bit, a little bit interested in this roster. Yeah, there's some great decision making throughout that. I mean, you you get a whole setup with Hampers potentially being able to win a fight over at A and that causing enough of a distraction, but they don't wait around for it forever either. And I mean, when they don't get the chance, Hampers did see someone and couldn't follow up the kill. They just say, all right, fine. We'll just try and see if we can maybe initiate on P. They did and, and won the afterplant. So wasn't just an sort of all or nothing kind of play either for NIP. Simple, quite far away from the action with the AWP. So yeah, this is just the likely outcome now. It's just about saving it, maybe sniping some kills, but don't go too hard at it either. I think that's got to be the goal for everyone on, on Navi at the moment is those pistols. Get close to Simple. Protect yeah. him at all costs. Keep that AWP in his hands. Yeah, it's, it'd be great if you could find some rifles and AK-47s right at the end, but all three players in towards CT spawn means Simple is going to be largely on his own as Nock goes through the hunt. He'll find his second. That's perfecto. Electronics able to shut him down, but no chance at recovering that. Hampus steps up to the plate next. And Simple should be okay in this position. Yeah, three to three. That's a nice little comeback, and again, it puts puts a sizable amount of pressure on the Navi economy. They could they could put together a buy here, and that's that's going to be helpful. But if you are if you are on the NIP side early on here, you probably feel pretty good about what you're seeing right now. I feel pretty good on behalf of NIP uh, at the moment. It's electronic and simple are doing pretty well. That's that is a dangerous combo to be up against, but um, yeah, good answer for NIP so far. All right, simple on catwalk, peering up towards top mid, blocked off by smoke for the moment. A standard start to the round for both sides. Three-man triangles defense set up for Navi. One in window, one catwalk, one in connector, and you've got Boomich deep at the A bomb site, just peering towards A ramp. And for the moment, NIP is just making sure there's no aggression anywhere. Very cautious, moving across the map. Bit of a flash thrown there to make Hampus just take the peek. He was down in underpass, so makes a lot of sense. Don't think Navi will want to be fighting too heavily in mid lane. Simple, if he gets a chance, he'll just snipe away a kill and, and start to fall back. This could definitely be an A crunch now that Hampus and Popsky and Rez Ooh. are about to... Actually, they, there are still all four in middle. I thought someone would have joined Nork, but he might just be the... The sole hitman coming out from the apartments there. Boomage unable oh to get back behind the box, and that's a big issue. It's a good headshot, but the bomb is still going to be going down, and now it's a retake, and one that Navi cannot afford to lose. Yeah, this is a misrotation. I'm amazed they're still going for this. Flamey needs a flashback if he's going to turn this corner. It's not coming. Baits out the shot with a shoulder peek. Plopsky's there. Oh, but he gets away. He abandons the fight. Good call from Plopsky. But still, this is way too much resistance. Yeah. I think Navi needs to back off right now before they lose everything. Twist still with the op, and you're smoking yourself off, and a leg shot onto Flamey. Now, certainly, you back away. Yeah, you feel like at some point they have to get the message that this is not going to be doable. Oh, and simple going down twist. A very, very tricky kill. That is going to be flaming next. And I mean, again, this is way too much of a loss for Navi. They could have definitely made it out with three rifles and that would have kept them competitive. Simple could have dropped for somebody and they could have had a pretty decent buy. In fact, I think simple could have dropped for two people in the next round. 
there, there's a misread in this round for Navi or a misrotation. Somebody, somebody made a mistake somewhere along the lines. You have three players in middle, as we outlined. One was in connector, one was in window room, one was catwalk, that was in simple. You have a defender at the B bomb site. I think the player in window actually rotated to B, where you already have simple on cat and one player anchoring. That leaves Boomich alone in A. And if I'm Boomich, I'm less than happy that somehow we have three defenders in middle and a four-man attack comes up through connector. If you're going to have that much manpower in that kind of a setup for Navi, like, there's got to at least be resistance before they get to Boomich's position, right? Like, that's way too much for one man at the A bomb site when everyone else is on the B side of the map. Like, he should not have to worry about that many different choke points. It's an impossible defense to mount, and Navi just gets overrun. Quite the start for the Swedish side all of a sudden, and... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it's just, it's also unreasonable if, if you're Boomich, right, early on in that fight and you're deep in the A bomb site and you're the first point of contact as they come out from connector and there's really no one there to, you know, you're already tasked with covering the A ramp and probably the, the palace as well. And now you also have to worry about the, the connector. That's, that also seems like a bit of a mistake in the setup to begin with. Attempted headshot there. Twist will take a bit of damage, but otherwise he'll... Take the angle with the AWP. Mid control once again here for uh, for the T side, though. And this is cool calling as well from NIP. Remember last round how slow they were to kind of progress across the map? They they knew there was going to be a full buy from Navi. Now they know they have the economic advantage. A couple pistols will be bought up. They still know they have some dangerous weapons they have to overcome. But now they're much faster in gaining control of mid and towards catwalk. Unfortunately, they're going right at the AWP of Simple. And now one player is trapped. And there's plenty of support here for Simple to stay alive and take more shots with this off. He's going to find at least another one. Knock, pin down against the wall, and Simple loves that battle. Well, they'll take down Boomich. He was flanking them in the meantime. So that was that's a a, a big uh, a big win for NIP. Nice shooting from Hampus. Ooh. He's really really warming up into this team. Now they're going to run a Perfecto. They're actually coming back to the site. They're going to almost run into each other. He's going to get the M4 out just in time. He could have been dead already. Now where are they going to go? If they go to the A bomb site, they're running at simple with 30 seconds. If they come down here, there's narrow corridor. He swings right into the headshot. That's an incredible kill from Plovsky. Very very important, and that probably wins them the round right there. Yeah, that one, I mean, you talk about the young guns of uh, the NIP side of things. Hampus, that kill in middle onto Flamey, and that one from Plopsky. They definitely heard him running Perfecto all the way to the end of those B-Halls. And that's why they stopped. They rotated right back into him. Good heads-up play from Perfecto. And again, simple delivering. Two kills in the round. He's at eight kills. Electronic at eight kills, and Boomich at six. For NIP, it's Plopsky and Nock at eight, and Hampus at six. But NIP is going to have a two-round lead, five to three. Yeah, I mean, it's everything they wanted, Navi, at the beginning of the round. Two kills for Simple, Boomich on the flank, but they can actually, they could pull back out again, and Boomich doesn't get even, I think even just the one flanking kill there on Hampus in the middle would have made all the difference in the world, but that's not uh, what actually happens. That's five rounds now for NIP, pretty early on in this game on Mirage. That's, that's actually pretty incredible. I think they're doing a remarkable job early on here. And their economy is pretty good as well. I mean, look at that. A lot of money on their side if they were to start losing. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, they've lost two players in that round that they just won. In the previous two rounds, they they stayed, they kept four players alive. So, I mean, they've been building a lot of money this whole time. And they're even going to take a timeout just to make sure they can maintain their winning ways. This is, a, this is a very cool showing to start this map for NIP. We're still waiting to see Navi really kind of switch on and get involved in this map. Simple still has the AWP. He's had it many, many rounds so far in this game. But yet to build any kind of momentum on the defense, winning the pistol in the ensuing two rounds. But once the guns came out for NIP, it's been all them. And look at if you look at the rounds that have been played, we're going into round number nine. So there's been eight rounds completed. There's been seven bomb plants in those eight rounds. NIP is finding easy access into these bomb sites. Yeah, there's just a, a lot of lot of ways to criticize Navi right now if we uh, if we wanted to keep that up. But uh, I'm Currently interested to see if they can. We can, Anders. We can, yeah. We do have that. We do have that power. But I'm also, I'm also looking for how to, how they're going to change things up here. If they're going to find a way to, to deal with it. They are way more heavy on the A bomb side this time. So, so they're leaning towards that side of the map, which again could be just fine. 
Still, still submit control in favor of NIP. This is wild. They're going to get up here quietly again. Yeah. Electronic and Boomich are down at A ramp, but they're going to have to watch behind them. Electronic is looking behind him this whole time. Boomich, he better win that fight. And now Electronic's in an impossible scenario. He's got Simple to back him up. Twist is going to pick him off. Flamey finds one in window room. And Navi is holding on for the moment. But there goes Simple. Two on two now. Twist and knock against Flamey and Perfecto. If they could just get that bomb down, the cover of that AWP would be huge, the one that Twist is holding at the moment. So Smoke to go and put the bomb down, a little bit of an off angle, just to avoid the easy spam. Flashbang being thrown over the wall, and Flamey can't find anyone behind it. I think Twist was momentarily flashed, but he's going to get a kill on Perfecto. Now it's looking good. One versus two for Flamey, looking on top of it. Oh, and he's going to get spotted. Nice peek from Twist. Great triple in the round, and NIP will win another round. And honestly, they could have won that even earlier if Electronic hadn't got that kill on the A-Ramp. It would have been done immediately. Yep. Or if Simple hadn't rotated just at the perfect moment to pick a player off. Again, this is, what, a minute and 20 seconds, and you already have NIP quietly walking into Connector, and nobody from Navi has any information. Navi is getting bruised, and, and NIP, there's no reason to not continuously go back to that. Until, until Navi's going to put some presence there, some bodies to actually fight for it, then keep going. This time, simple, a timing shot into the smoke up catwalk. That's at least going to slow them down. What a dreadful start this is for Navi. I mean, this is with them winning the pistol. That's, that's no longer feels like any kind of a victory. It feels sort of like a, you know, almost like a, a point of that you have to sort of withdraw from it. Could be 9-0 and oh at this point in time if NIP had actually won the pistol round. They're trying to get, to get hunted down. It's a three on three, so the pistols have done a little bit so far. And simple with that AWP again. He's found the kills. He's he's been active, but it's not been enough just yet for them to actually win. Perfecto's on a pretty long flank, and I mean, imagine that's going to come in way too late. The problem is his kills aren't having enough of an impact, and that's not a criticism of simple. That's just the kills that he's getting is not stopping NIP from getting into the site itself. You know, he's being very mobile across the map, but he's not able to put a stop to these hits whatsoever. Now we're coming in on a retake. They've got to wait for this flank to come in, and again, it's no kits. So the longer this flank takes, the more dangerous it is for Na'Vi to try and win this round. This is such a cool angle for Plovsky. When he's ducked down, he can't really be seen from the other side. Now, yeah, that's the only point of danger. And now he's in a fair bit of danger. Flamey will get dropped anyway. Excellent kill and simple to pick off. Twist is still very low percentage here. Without a kit, it's going to be all day diffusing inside and simple knows it. Oh, look at Rez just toying with him. And time has gone even with the kill. It's not going to be enough. It's another triple and another loss here for Na'Vi. Seven to three. Seven straight runs here. Surrounds here for NIP. That's absolutely incredible. And eight rounds that NIP's been able to just stroll in and get the bomb planted. Navi, if you're going to live and die by the retakes, you better actually be able to retake a bomb site, and they're not showing it with any real consistency here. This is, uh, this is getting rough. At this point, NIP's already put together a very good T-half, and they have a chance to make it an excellent T-half. AWP on simple still, as he saved it from the previous round. Here comes Hampus. Yeah, make it a bit of noise in middle. Again, there's no one channel. I mean, Electronic is just sort of here looking. They have Flamey and Perfecto over at this B site, and that's good news, but they still need to get the grenades down, and look at how close NIP are getting to the actual bomb site. One kill. If, if that had gone through for Rez, and the follow-up is amazing, in the middle it's Electronic going down. That leaves Flamey alone, and there's no time to call any backup. It happens so quickly. Needed to be a double spray there for Flamey, and it isn't, so... I think NIP just have the luxury of being so close to the bomb sites when they when they pull the trigger, and now we can't even react to it. Yeah, it's it's weird seeing Navi not actually try. It feels like they're not even really mounting a defense of any kind. There, there's no, I don't know. This 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 defensive side is just everything is standard. We're not seeing a whole lot of aggression. We're not seeing a whole lot of you know fight for map control. We're not seeing them actually challenge to take any early fights in these in these rounds. It's kind of kind of scary to think about the amount of times we've seen NIP now just walking into a contact at B bomb site, previously just walking up connector, and they're not being harassed. They're not encountering any resistance whatsoever. So this Navi team needs to needs to wake up. Like this this defense is is gross. 
Yes, it, I mean, it really is. The, there are... Just feels like there are so many things missing at the moment. They tried that one round where they flashed that way in the middle and the flashbang wasn't that great, so they ended up losing simple. But I, st I still want to see more of that, those kind of plays. I, I don't know why you wouldn't... At least, just to even get the information, I don't even care if you get the kills. Just try and see if you could, you know, you could do the same thing at the B hallways. Jump for some information, flash your way in there, try and try and see if you could figure out what's going on. It really feels like they know by the time it's way too late. All right, there's a nice nade kill from Flamey to open things up. Simple's going to watch his back in the underpass. But he's got that op still, and he can be a nuisance in middle, but the main hit is going to be at this A bomb site, and we're really rolling the dice with this smoke. We know Electronic loves to do it. He's so very good, but Knock is aware. What? Oh my god, how is he? He got a double out of that situation. He's done it again, Electronic. One player in Palace, and that's Rez. He's going to have to back off. But the bomb is down, and Navi have control, and this should be a Navi victory. It almost has to be a Navi victory. Yeah, I've, you know... With a little bit of hesitation in your voice, I can I can tell, but it should be. Boom it here. Trying to get the early info. Gonna spot someone there and just try and buy a little bit of more time. But yeah, that's that is kind of the name that Electronic has made for himself. You could even tell they were sort of looking for it. They they actually felt that coming and they still couldn't stop him. Boomich with the AWP, not, not a sight we see all the time. Does get baited out, but they will get the follow-up. And that's two orbs now, and I don't know if Perfecto could get an AK doesn't look like it, so it's a fourth round for an IP for uh, sorry for Navi. I'm not sure if that's going to be quite enough. That's a nice catch of the HG grenade. They need so much more right now, Navi. An eight round run they need for to, an um, IP. I, uh, yeah, I almost think they need to just close out this half with three three more rounds. I think they need to take this up to seven. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the swatch, the swip. Uh, oh my lord, the the swap when they get to the T side um, for Navi. When you could start to see, you know. The, the kills and the skill of electronic and simple actually being able to open up bomb sites instead of trying to recover lost bomb sites. Simple with the opening kill. Nice shot as Rez tries to get up catwalk very quickly. Yeah, not falling back from that position either. Flamey Man, unable to see Flamey didn't see that again. No, he definitely didn't. And I mean, I don't know if there was the fire or what it was, but Plopski's going to be able to get that frag. That's a nice opening, nice refrag coming in to even it up. As, how are they in these positions? I don't this know. This is what I'm so confused about. Boomich is fortunate to be alive. This is craziness. And there's Simple. He's picked off as well. Good kills from Boomich and a desperate scenario. But man, NIP, like living up to the name of Ninja, getting into way more advanced positions than they should ever be allowed. And they're doing it silently with no knowledge of the Navi defense. Yeah. These have been tough angles to handle. But the players of the A bomb said Electronic and Boomich, they handle it admirably, but. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. There was every chance that Boomage could have been picked off in the first fight, and if he hadn't peeked the box, he would have been grenaded and died with no refrag. So, yeah, I, I, this is way too close. Way too close. They shouldn't be allowed to get this far in. Eight to five, though. And the NIP economy is finally taking a dive. So I guess, I mean, if we had to say something positive about Navi for a change, I think that this is it. Just the AWB on twist. Well, maybe an M4 to be picked up, although Nock maybe fell asleep at the wheel. Didn't see the shoulder sticking out from Boomich. And the rest of uh, the rest of NIP very passive as Twist and I believe Plopsky fall back from the B bomb site to rejoin in T spawn. Yeah, it did feel like Nock kind of drifted off for a minute there. Bit of a flash in the middle for Navi, just taking note because that's what we've been asking for. And this time they did actually just just peak, not even a wide swing for any fights. But I'm just happy that we're seeing Navi trying to get a bit of information to work with, which is uh, what they've been lacking a lot of the time here. Going to be some smokes going down to try and block off those AWPs or that one AWP on simple. And then I'm guessing they just want to flash their way in and try and go for a quick bomb plant. Twist is covering them from behind, but he goes down to simple. And now it should just be about closing this round without much of a, an issue at all. And that's exactly what they're doing. Nice round from Navi.
Yeah, very nicely done. In this round, no issues whatsoever. All five players survive, and they have a chance here, Anders. We uh, said they needed to go on that three-round run or four-round run to close out the half. They're, uh, they're just one round away from it. Final 15th round of the opening half. Electronic now at 16, Simple at 15 for the Na'Vi defense. But for the most part, it's been it's been ugly. At least at least they've been denying bomb plants <laughs> in, for the past three rounds. It's it's crazy to think seven of eight rounds in that streak for NIP and that eight to nothing winning streak were bomb plants, were access into sites. Yeah. And I think e even at seven rounds for Na'Vi, that's that's only just where you sort of say, all right, I guess, you know, give it a shrug. Just, all right, I guess they, they did that. That's interesting. Now let's see if they can continue. But it's, it's obviously not, still not great. Simple, nearly going down from that, and he does not have any backup there either. I think Electronic is trying to get over to maybe try and take a look. And now they're actually bumping into each other, so please stop doing that. <laughs> oh, Hampus right underneath the window. He's going to be joined up by Twist with just the Deagle nearby. But hey, this is NIP maybe not enjoying the more aggressive defense, the more peaky defense that Navi have brought out in these past three rounds. Being pretty cautious as once again they want to take mid control. They want to exploit control of that part of the map. And with one player lurking at A ramp, it feels like this should end up being a split towards that A bomb site. And as I say, that two player is going to fall away. Back to A. So Hampus oh. towards window room. Again. Twist in connector and three player hit towards ramp and palace. I mean, one flashbang on electronic and this whole A bomb site is wiped out. I think that's all it takes. The smoke is there. Simple will pick off Twist. That's a really good start. That's the connector part of this push gone. And Hampus not looking for it. Huge defensive kills coming out from electronic as Simple in the first go around. That actually stops all the pressure on the middle, and now it's just about that ramp. Nice headshot from Nork. Can't believe he won that fight versus the AWP. But it's a two on three with 15 seconds, so now we just think, need to calm down. I think Rez crashed. I think it's a one on three. Oh, yeah. Rez just staring into the wall. Either that, or he really is oh, the, baby. the worst baiter of all time. Just think, go plant the bomb, I'll come. Yeah, up. like, if you're gonna bait this hard, you better... ...up a little bit at the end. I, I still, that makes me feel really weird about this game. I still think NIP put on a much better show. Yeah, they, they absolutely did. It's And it's not about, I mean, that's... NIP looked like the better team just by the eye test in that first half, but I mean, you could we could see that disappear very, very quickly. But NIP have a pretty tough task ahead of them. Down one round, seven to eight. They need to win nine rounds to close this map in regulation on their T side. That is not always an easy task. At the moment, spread across the map. Standard default, and Hampus is going to get baited into a nice little push. Easy kill for Electronic, who can now switch out for the USP. Rez is spotted too, but they've made their way close to Connector, and the USP, that's in some danger, but he handles it so well. Double kill for Rez. When that flashbang that came over the wall did nothing at all to Rez, he's going to get taken down finally. Simple sneaking in and almost getting caught in that murder hole. That leaves Plopsky alone in B versus three people that are coming for him. So now really is the time to be a hero. If he can get even one kill and buy some time, that would at least get Twist and Nork a bit closer. There's Plopsky with the one kill on Boomer. She's looking for one more headshot. Electronic's up there with the bomb. He knows Simple is close. Plopsky, great defense, taking down Electronic as well. What a heroic stand. What a badass Plopsky just was. That is so great. You know Simple is flanking from Market. You know he's come through the murder hole. Your only option is to get aggressive towards the halls and see how many kills you can get. Between him and Rez, they stood their ground so very well. He's taking these fights instead of letting him cl get close up. That's a beautiful shot on Simple. And Plopsky is a beast. 18 kills for him now. Yeah, that made a huge difference just being able to read it the fact that he knew that symbol was coming from the kitchen area really really helped out of the marketplace in there so some deals on the navi side but the fact that they lost that pistol is really not a good sign we'll see how long the win streak lasts for this time for nip before now we are allowed to have a say again I actually think that that pissed around victory for NIP and with the, with the fact that Navi haven't forced up here, it feels like that's, for me, that's like the hopes and dreams of Navi of being able to close this out in regulation I, I, are kind of just gone in my mind. Like, it's going to be so difficult to grind out that many rifle rounds once NIP is able to get M4s and AWPs and they have the economic advantage, at least for the early going. 
So Navi's going to be in a really grinded out affair down the stretch. Twist looking this way with a scout. Excuse oh. me, a nade. He pulls a nade out and Simple punishes him. Yeah, that was some really awkward timing. Could be even worse if Rez or Nork goes down. I think mostly if Rez goes down, that'll leave Nork pretty much in an unwinnable position here. He's going to get the one kill, but they jump around the corner. And yeah, now the next question is, he's got some backup now from TT spawn. Plopski actually showing up at the perfect time for it, but it's not going to be quite oh, no. enough anyway. 23 seconds. Hampus coming in from behind with a big double kill. Could get more, and that will close it out. A little bit of a heroic effort. Triple kill from Hampus on the MP9, but a much closer round than I think NIP would have liked. Yeah, they were they were in a really rough spot. They are NIP fortunate that their players made all the correct calls and getting aggressive on the extremities. Hampus closing the gap. That flank was way faster than Navi was ready for. And they catch him before they can even get into the bomb site. But with those many kills, obviously Bai coming out, saving a lot of money. So three AKs, two Galils, plenty of utility for Navi. And that Deagle round previously just set the stage to reset NIP very early on. So here we go. Molotov in towards connector. Plopski's gonna put it out. And he's fortunate he did so because Boomich was about to turn the corner. Yeah, this is the real big test right now for Navi, as you said. If they want to close this out in regulation, then losing that pistol was really not a good sign. If they can't win this first rifle round, then maybe it's not even going to be a question at all. And we'd have to go to Nuke to uh, to figure it out. And this map was picked by NIP, and Nuke picked up by Navi. So I guess we'll see. But again, I really like NIP on Nuke, uh, all things considered. I think they're, they're just a fun team to watch on that map. So... Again, would not underestimate them. Looks like it's going to be a piece, but with Electronic in this position, it could be absolutely amazing. He's in a nice swing position, either to stop rotations or to take the fight against Hampers if that goes south for the first part of the push here. There's no stopping the rotations that are coming in now. This is a perfect timing for it. Electronic might have done some damage over to Plopski. But there's going to be three players here, maybe even a wow. fourth very quickly for NIP. And Navi, they haven't nearly got out enough to negate the fact that the entire defense is going to be here. Even one on a fast flank is coming in hot. Good kill from Flamey in the smoke. And look at this. They know there's going to be resistance. They know this is taking a while. Boomich going to get dropped by Plopski, still holding onto the bomb site just barely. Well, look at this flank from Nock, though. I mean, the bomb is planted for Electronic. That's really the big news here. And there are no more smoke grenades, but they still have to get some more kills in here. Nock flanking in should be an easy pickup on Flamey. And now it's all of Electronic, and he's pushed forward. He knows he can't fight it. One versus three once they're on the defuse, and they're going to lose the round. That is... Well, first of all, the Molotov that was thrown there at the beginning from Hampus was just the god-tier timing, wasn't it? And then the follow-up, the rotation coming in from NIP. They had a very good read. Man, almost... Plopski is having w one hell of a game, Anders. Yeah. I'm just... I, I so want to... I almost want to see the replay of of the first encounter because because Nord was flanking and I wonder how far up in the hallways he was over at A before for him to know because they were so ready for that rotation. Great info play from, uh, from NIP. That made a big difference. Yeah, I, I mean... They had the perfect call on it. It was shifting pretty much immediately when, when presence was known. But Navi, like, t they took their time getting into that bomb site as they did, uh, you know, on the Deagle round as well. They were very slow in actually committing to the attack on that bomb site. So th there was probably, I mean, listen, it's a great read, a great call, and an early jump on the rotation for NIP. But Navi, you can see him here just kind of freezing and jiggle peeking and waiting for that next peek. No one's actually attacking the bomb site throughout all of this until it's too late. Look at how Plopski just sneaks in at the end of that replay to that pillar. If they're actually aggressive into that bomb site a second or two earlier, Plopski can't make that play with such safety. So Navi's actually giving him a couple of extra seconds to make those kinds of plays. Well, they've used all of their money except for $200 there on the NIP side, or oh, sorry, the Navi side. So this once again has to work out. But I feel like we've been saying that for a while, and some of those important rounds that Navi just desperately need to win, they're not doing that. And I don't know. Even that last round, they were they were red far, be far before they even really got to the site. And think about how you can contrast it with the way that NIP were playing on their T side, where you know once the fight broke out, they were pretty much on the bomb site. Like they would they were jumping down into B when when the first bullets were fired and. Here, Navi, they got they got Molotov'd off. There was a whole rotation coming in. It's such a very different feel when it comes to playing the T side here.
All right, well, at least Electronics in this position. This time he's going to be aggressive with it, and Rez is kind of, kind of looking in that relative area. Not able to transfer over to Electronic. Knock now going to push up, and he hears the footsteps. This needs to be at least a trade. Boomich turning the corner first. Simple's got it. Now just down to Hampus. Over in the corner. He spotted out. He's dinked. He's going to fall as well. And Electronic adds one more. That's Ooh. a... That's awkward. That's a bomb plan in the seconds. open. That's yeah, very awkward. And thankfully they got that because there's oh, no more again, smoke. But he can actually spam this down. No one's actually challenging. And unfortunately, Twist isn't going to be able to get it done. Now it's time to save with the AWP. Just a moment where that could have got real awkward, but they're going to live through it. And I mean, that's uh, in many ways, that's Navi proving the same point that NIP proved many times, which is that if you can get that close to the A bomb side, that you could pretty much take the fight that, that dead on, then yeah, you've got everything open. This is a brilliant kill for Electronic. Uh, I mean, not because it's particularly difficult, just because those A defenders that are inside of the site and over at the ramp, what are they going to do afterwards? Where do they go to try and stay safe? They just can't. They can't even help each other out. So, that's important. 8 to 11. And this time the NIP win streak is way, way shorter. And that's good news for Na'Vi. Alright. Ooh, that's a good shot from Boomich. It's a nice tag from Twist as well with the scout. But a better response. A more powerful rebuttal from Lord Boomich. Oh, yeah. We, you know, lest we forget. His proper title. Someone will... There's, there's a Twitter account out there somewhere that's going to be coming after us if we do, so... Mustn't... <laughs> mustn't mess that up. We do have four deagles. I'm... I'm kind of... I'm missing Rez and Hampus deagle action. Not that I don't want Plopsky and Nork, but it's just that we were building, like, a cool story around them, so... Can we get back to that? Let's get some of these Swedish kids in action. I'm more... I'm more missing Navi just being this this crazy, fun, dominant force that we saw at Katowice. I that's know. That's what I want to see. But I mean, that's been, that's been the story of Navi for like five years now. <laughs> I know, Jason. Imagine if you'd bought the hype back then and just predicted them to win the major already. I mean, just... Imagine how you'd feel then. <laughs> yeah, you'd feel like a real idiot, wouldn't you? Well, they're going to be rushing into a fully stacked B bomb site, all with deagles, but they're getting the early fights. There's Plopsky and Hampus getting one each at the very least, but yeah, no chance for Hampus in that corner. So it will be a good round for Navi, all things considered. They get to survive with three rifles, they get to build a little bit of an economy, and NIP still don't have money to buy. So actually, Navi, uh, they're sort of. They're cruising into a couple of easy rounds here. I wonder how that feels. They're not used to it. Yeah, they're probably a little bit shocked as, as well themselves. I don't know. I just find it funny. I, this, this is playing out exactly how, how Chad kind of described it on the desk. Simple and Electronic are going to get theirs. You know, they're at 22 and 23 kills respectively. But what a drop off. Boomich is at 12, Perfecto at 9, Flamey at 8. It's the other three guys that haven't been able to find some consistency. And you go to the other guy in the desk, Maniac, and I even think that he made a very good point where sometimes it is a bit rough playing with playing with players of this caliber when you know that you can contribute more and for whatever reason you're just not able to do it. I think there's some mental game there with those three players that's not letting them to deliver fully to their potential, but but certainly Navi's going to need to find a way to fix this issue. Yeah, they absolutely have to. The hunt is in for Flamey. He's got some backup in Boomich trying to come in and help him out, so that's a, that's a good friend right there, and Flamey decides why risk the AK-47. He does make it back. That's... That's terrific. You know, well, the, the last two players are. Yeah, go on. When I bought the, the Navi hype, this is the thing that I saw, which, which, you know, tragically only lasted for like three games. But but what I saw during those three games was, oh, wait, Flamey might actually get found here. Let's just let's just hold the thought for a second. Ah, oh, boom, it's just going to cancel that. So fair play. <laughs> it was um, it was a, it was a core of Navi player that looked like you know, Perfecto, Flamey, Simple, and Electronic all playing, you know, their game. And then having Boomich as this, you know, lone ranger to do a lot of craziness. And what I really liked about that is that I think if you have to take down some of the some of the top-level teams, it actually, I think it's hard to try and match, well, 
maybe not now, but it would have been hard to try and match Astralis uh, with, with the kind of system they had built. And I think one of the ways to fight that is to have someone doing crazy Counter-Strike like Boomich was for a short while. But that, you know, that does actually... You do need Boomich to keep playing that, and you need the core four people to keep playing their game really well. And both those things have kind of not been working out so well. So, um... I don't know what to think of it now, but that was the reason why I was so uh, so excited for a minute there. Exciting to start this round with as well, taking down Nock. That's that's not bad. Yeah, simple given a gift there as Nock tries to uh, just kind of aggress on a ramp all on his own. No flashbang, no utility, no backup. It's an easy kill for simple, and he'll be happy to have it. That allows Navi this the slow style that we know they like to bring out. Much much easier to pull off when you're at a five on four, when you can tactically play it slow and pull the defense in all these different directions. You're going to have Boomich and Perfecto. You imagine they're going to have some kind of a pressure to apply, especially with that MAC-10. We'll see Boomich doing some crazy stuff, whether it's up connector, but NIP have an idea it's coming. The B defender is Plopsky, and he's already rotated out of the site. He's already coming over to join with his teammates. Molotov, spam combination from Flamey. And Twist is under some pressure and dark. Oh, there's Boomich running over the Mac 10 to take down Rez. I'm kind of shocked that Twist is still alive. So many bullets and grenades thrown his way. It's going to be one to set it up. There's a long range fight that almost the Mac 10 wins. Hampers showing up. Good spray, but Electronic will take both of them down afterwards. And that is going to leave Kowski in a very bad position, trying to sneak through the hole into the window room. And Perfecto will take him down. Navi now tying the scoreline at 11 11, but more, more significantly, Building an economy and destroying NIPs. This is it's a kind of a scary turnaround we've got going on here. I feel like NI I mean Navi's kind of lucky that Electronic gets that blind spray transfer over. They're they're really kind of NIP's been able to read them this whole game on both sides of the map. And these hits are kind of slow to come to fruition. We saw it at the B bomb site earlier when NIP's able to rotate someone. And again, Perfecto's able to rotate from the B bomb site to the A bomb site and get there in time for the battle. I, I just think Navi's making this a little bit harder on themselves by, by letting by letting NIP rotate into position and having to grind out these gunfights with trades, with always encountering someone from NIP every step of the way. And now they're winning, so I mean, you take from that what you will, but it does feel like a Navi is, is really ensuring that they're going to have a battle each step of their attack. Yeah, playing on hard mode in, in some sense. It's a very Navi way of, of approaching Counter-Strike, isn't it? Plomsky. Yeah, that has been their, their MO yeah. for a while now. Feels like it. Deagle back here by the bench could be good for a kill. I doubt it's going to be more. Depends on whether or not they check. He does, doesn't have a kit or anything. Otherwise, staying here the whole game would be fun. But uh, I don't feel like that's uh, what's in the cards right here. Electronic taking down Rez and Plomsky. There's, I mean, 45 seconds or something like that. So even if you were to get one kill and the bomb planter, it's not going to be enough. So <laughs> I'd fair play. I don't really blame him for, uh, for trying. No, not at all. But that's the most Deagle, Deagle clip I've ever seen in my life when the, when the Deagle betrays you in that fashion. 12 to 11 for Navi coming alive on this T side and uh, now finally taking the lead for the first time since, uh, what, like round six? We're all, t we're, uh, we're in a good place if you're Navi. 12 to 11. And Electronic now up to 28 kills. Simple at 23. And you go to the other side of the coin, it's NIP on the defense. It's only Plopsky who's able to match either of those guys. 22 kills on him. Next closest is Knock and Twist tied for 14. So Navi showing some resilience and coming back into this map. And they are rich. Jason, they've got so much money to work with. Disgustingly rich. Holy hell, they are. Yeah, that's great. All the penthouse suites. All, all that stuff. Champagne for breakfast. I don't know what rich people do, to be honest, but it's fine. Something like that. <laughs> Champagne on your cereal. I don't know. Is that allowed? You're a cereal guy, Jason. You talk a lot about it. No, you, you cannot desecrate the, the bowl of cereal with champagne. That's disgusting. All right. However, orange juice, on the other hand, is great. Okay, well... And I'm not going to doubt you. you. You fed me peanut butter and jelly in, uh, in LA, and it was great. I, I, I got a. For your was... first time, your first PB&J, it's a spectacular sandwich. Yeah, I was, uh, I was doubting it a lot. Had a lot of, uh, lot of prejudice going into that one, and uh, I was instantly converted. It's real good. Um, 
Orange juice cereal. I feel feel much the same. No, orange juice champagne. Oh, champagne, not not cereal. Oh, all right. See, okay. Well, I thought that's what you were saying. You, you amateur. <laughs> Fair play then. Well, here we go. Enough about the cereal. It's simple. Getting grenaded all the way to hell and knock. Nearly getting caught there. That could have been dangerous. He's good for another one, but Boomich will take him down. They were shooting him through the box. Just pre-firing that. The grenade into the corner, and Reyes is going to walk right into it. Ooh. He barely lives through it, but that is dangerous. And Electronic, he's still holding top mid while this bomb is down. That means this retake, if Electronic gets the right timing, it's not even going to happen. Nice shot from Boomich with the AWP. He's almost going to get the second one, and Twist will get one in the middle. But here comes Electronic. He's slowly sneaking in behind them. Flame, he's uh, there for a kill on Rez, and now it's Hampers and Twist two versus three, but they don't realize they're going to get shot in the back. Just that one kill will absolutely seal the round. And now we are now well on their way to taking this map away. 13-11 with, again, all of the money in the bank. So ridiculous. This, this, uh, Navi's doing such a good job with these, with these lurks. Guys like Electronic that we've seen up in Window Room a couple of times or in Ladder Room once or twice. Now the flank on Catwalk during this retake. They're doing a really good job of winning the initial battles at the bomb sites so that that lurker, that flanker can have such a massive impact. And they're starting, I mean, they've taken complete control of this game. Now it's NIP's defense who just cannot find a way to get comfortable. Navi on a six to nothing run of their own on the T side. And this is just a mirror image of the first half. In the first half, Navi wins the first three rounds and then loses eight straight. Now it's NIP winning the first three rounds of the second half and losing six in a row at the moment. What an odd game. I mean, I'll take it. I think now I'm just interested to see if NIP can, can turn this around somehow. They actually know that Hampus is in there somewhere, so I, do, I don't understand why they want to try and do that. It's Twist as well, and he gets, uh, he gets to take a little peek behind that Molotov, and it goes down instantly. So, that doesn't really work out so well for him. Nor hearing the flashbang, wanted to go for a fight, and he'll take down an Electronic. So now it's interesting. Well, they've seen one in Connector, and they've seen one on Catwalk taking the shot, so they know there's a bit of a crossfire. Good job from Nock to take the AK-47. I, and we'll see what he can do with it. I think Perfecto might have heard those footsteps, but doesn't know if he's gone to A or B. So at the moment, Navi's just going to hit the pause button. Group up together. They still have plenty of utility. They've held on to that. They haven't wasted anything. Oh, oh dear. That is a that is a real ridiculously good shot. That's going to make everyone nervous now. Look at the time that's left. 25 seconds, they walk in. Another one from Hampus. They line up for him. He's going to get a double. And Perfecto is alone in middle. 20 seconds. He's got absolutely no chance of doing this. He's going to get a headshot here. But all Res has to do is wait behind that pillar. No chance that Perfecto checks it and he goes down. Huge win for NIP with the Deagles. And that is going to put an end to the Navi win streak. That I don't think anyone could have guessed that's how that round would have played out. No, you said you wanted the NIP Deagles to come alive. There's a great round. That shot from Plopsky out of Simple is so filthy. It is so filthy. That's the best player in the world, hands down, that Plopsky just straight disrespects like this. 13 to 12, as you mentioned, Navi just so rich that they can take that kind of a loss and barely even blink. They just shrug it off. Back to a full buy and still electronic with $11,000 in the bank. Simple, gonna be under some pressure here. Deep smoke gonna force him away he was ready if they wanted to take that fight he, he was almost uh, asking for it no one in window no one even close by so boomage has got to be here for free what a powerful position to be in especially this early on if he if he actually keeps going this could be super dangerous to nip we'll see he can't know that obviously but it's it's going to be interesting to see how this will play out this could be a devastating loss for an IP having just won the round or could end up pretty well. Good grenade down the middle. So imagine how easily they could even get rid of Twist here. I mean, one good flashbang and maybe smoke him off and, and you're good to go. We'll see once that first smoke clears. There's Twist setting up for it. That's nearly godlike timing. That actually was incredible. Rez is going to start to fall back, and Boomich is there, instantly <laughs> taking him down. And they had no idea someone was that deep in. Nork now at the A-Ramp, Twist on the other side of the CT spawn. They've got a crossfire, theoretically, but who wants to go first in this one? Twist looking for the kill, and I thought he's, someone would have wrapped on the other side. It's probably what he reckoned, but that doesn't happen. It's Electronic with a double. Nork trying to get back in the round, but it's a 2-on-3. He's low on health after that grenade, and uh, I don't know. 
I don't think this is worth it, and IP, you don't have the money to lose these rifles. No, you don't. I'm, I'm with you. This should be a back off. But we'll see what they can do with it. Nock is already pretty committed at the moment. Plopsky coming in. If Plopsky can get the AWP, it's time to go. He does have a kit. He's going to trust in the smoke. He's got Nock holding in. Palace actually, all of a sudden, there's some real promise here. Some nade work, some spam coming through. And on the bomb, Plopsky is going to get it. He's pulled that out of nowhere. That smoke and defuse, and Navi cannot find him. 13 13. Wow, that is so confusing. Tech pause being called now from Navi. I. Boomich was in the middle with an I'd AK call it tech pause too if that just happened to me. Yeah, I'd definitely. be like, yeah, my computer broke. <laughs> You're right. That's the way to go. I mean, this is a very cool, but I'm, I'm not understanding here. There's the initial attempt from Boomich, but he's so late to fire it. You see, he, he's basically doing that in the last second of that defuse. So that's uh, that's why we have the tech pause coming in right now. They said Boomich crashed. Oh, so all right. Well, that could be part of the part of the explanation. It's still, that I mean, could be part of it. But listen, we go one for one, right, Anders? We saw Rez crash in the last round of the uh, in the first half of a yeah, two that's versus true. three. Now we have Boomich crash here. We've we've got an equal trade. The yeah. universe is balanced as all things should. Thanos would be proud. Well. Yeah, I mean, what can we do? It's it's just the uh, the age of the Counter Strike that we're living in, so we'll have to take it. Yeah, that's thirteen thirteen. So plenty of money for Navi. I guess that's sort of the upside here, but that has got to be a little bit frustrating. Twenty seventh round, about to commence here. For NIP, though, I mean, that's it's a similar kind of weakness. It's once you get a guy into that window or into the connector, you know, you see Rez, he was backing off from that A ramp. And he walks right into a shot, and and really, that's when you know something is wrong. Well, also, I mean, you, you can compound that, too, when you look at... I think you're right. Both teams are having the same issue with their defensive sides, that that middle part of the map, connector and window room, is just way too exposed. However, when you look at the Navi side, the person who's been doing it for them is Electronic, and he's perhaps in the history of CSGO got to be considered one of the best, like, open space duelists that we, that we have, that we've ever had. And, I mean, he's going to love just swinging into jungle like that and fighting over towards dark, fighting towards underneath the balcony, fighting towards palace. Those fights are his bread and butter. And he just had enough in this round. It's a shame that his triple kill has gone to waste. A great kill from Nock pouncing up on the flank from A ramp where he was hit in the whole round. Um, and we're all tied up. However, still going to be low on money is NIP. Yeah, and, I mean, that's... That's why the 13-13 scoreline is still pretty scary for, for NIP. Both teams obviously well within striking range at the moment, but yeah, you have to think if you're if you're in it right now, what happens if we if we lose another round and, and give away some of these rifles? There just a, a small point, right? Let's say Boomich wasn't even in the middle at all. That actually it does highlight one of the issues though of holding the after plant with an orb from middle like that. If there's a smoke up, it can be very, very hard to guess. I'm, I mean there, there's no way that Navi could have known what would have happened, but We've seen that before, where you're trying to shoot through the smoke to stop the defuse, and you don't have many chances to get that right. Yeah. Man, I, I still, I was I was thinking along the same lines as you. Maybe we're just thinking way too conservative. I was thinking that needs to be a, the save. Such a low percentage chance. I didn't even notice the smoke in his pocket. That was well played from NIP to snatch that, that hand out of the, the, you know, the, snatch that round out of the clutches of defeat. Yeah. Again, though, 13-13. Three rounds left in the half. Or excuse me, four rounds including this one. Well, three men at the A-bomb site. So it's sort of a similar setup. Nork and Plops gear a little bit for the back this time. Twist and Hampers over on the other side. And Twist with the AWP. I, I like this setup for them right now, especially because it allows Hampers to lean closer into middle. And Twist is going to be holding that. He could have taken a, a deeper angle, but... He probably knows Simple has an AWP, so I don't blame him for not wanting to go um, go more, you know, more challenging over at that B side. Just get the get the leverage towards the middle at this point in time. Mid control for Navi now as Electronic works his way up catwalk. Pretty much doing this all on his own. He does have Simple with the op in support. Unfortunately for Electronic, if he wants to get in window now, there is going to be a bit of a battle as Hampus is 
already in waiting in ladder room. But this is pretty standard stuff so far. Flamey, they've seen him plenty of times over in Palace. There's the peek from Hampus, and Simple never expected it. Good return, good rebuttal from Electronic, but now they have to press forward into the B bomb site. And the upper here is oh. Twist, and he's in so much trouble. Taken down, rotation is late. Electronic just missed the angle, but now he's got it back. Now they really need to think about this Navi. The bomb is down here. It's so do nip. I mean, what do you do? Three versus four. You can see Plowski is, is miles away. He's probably worried about Flamey being up in those apartments for a long time. He's in the middle, though. He already rotated back, and they just need to save the guns. That was one of the rounds where Navi just looked so decisive. As soon as Electronic spun for that kill, they were yeah. ready to go. And that is like the, the complete lack of input delay in that one where they just they immediately made the choice. I want to see that pretty much every round out of Navi. Yeah, that that's kind of been our criticism of a couple of the rounds where they've been they, where they've made contact and gotten some kills, but they still kind of are very lackadaisical and getting into the bomb site, and that's allowed NIP to rotate into position. This time, you're exactly right. As soon as Simple goes down and Electronic gets that trade, they're pushing into the bomb site. So, well done from Navi, getting in quick, getting that bomb planted, and unfortunately, NIP with three rifles but no utility just didn't have the stones to go for the retake, which is fair play. One round lead for Navi now, and NIP buying everything they can into the round. It's going to be two Famas to surround the M4s. No AWP, a little bit light on utility for a couple players, but they have plenty of kits to work with. Man, what a scary scenario for, for NIP. They did just win two in a row, but lost that last one. Puts so much pressure on their, on their economy, no doubt about it. Now we could definitely walk away with a victory here. I'll wait while the clock runs down on the timeout here. Ten more seconds, but right now, I don't know. I would like. I would. So I, I like the way the twist was holding that early on with the orb over there, but he he did fall back. Just I guess he was Molotov back from that position to begin with, and then the grenade landed right on top of him. I would like to see NIP try and go for like a time mid retake or something where, you know, because they've had three people towards middle a number of times. So maybe just, you know, set that up, flash your way in there and try and go for a fight. It looks like Navi, though, might be going a little bit faster towards the A bomb site. Might be slowed down by that uh, smoke going up, though. They're gonna... I think they're gonna keep Electronic in the middle, but look at Hampus. Oh, there's a clock on this round. Oh, yeah, there is. Flamey's gonna start dropping his utility, and if they can get in quick, again, decisive, although Flamey, again, no reaction to the play from Plopsky. Now he's gonna be able to hold on a Palace, but Electronic springs into action, and still, that flank is so close now. And this time, they've been slowed down. They haven't slowed themselves, but that presence of Plopsky has made them take their time, and that makes Hampus so powerful, but he's given away his position. They now know one A ramp, one in Palace. And Simple and Electronic, the top fraggers for Navi, have all the time in the world to make their decision. Electronic is low on health, though. Simple gonna go for a very open bomb plant. If he gets into CT spawn, he could probably cover this all day. They do have another smoke, so it's worth really thinking about because we already saw once what can happen. But this might have to be up to Simple. Hampus made his way in the middle. Electronic is hearing this step every time. So yeah, he knows what's right in front of him. Simple with the one kill and a good follow-up. Electronic and Simple, that duo has been working all throughout 15-13. But yeah, it's Electronic at 34 kills. That's so incredible. And Simple, not that far behind, but still a little bit at 25. I can't believe Electronic has got the 34 kills. I didn't even notice. Yeah, he's been doing it solid. He's been doing it just once in a while, every couple rounds. He's been getting his one or two, so that's that's not bad at all. Man, that's a really tough... Uh, I don't necessarily want to criticize it, but that decision by Hampus to rotate all the way around towards mid, it forces Plopsky to be passive too, which what is what allows Simple to get that bomb plant and move to CT spawn with such safety. If they stick around, maybe they can decide to take that fight, but if you rotate around towards mid, it really forces your teammate to play it passively, even though he dinked Electronic and had the advantage of HP. And again, not a criticism, it's just the consequences of that choice. Oh, they walk right into the grenade. They wanted to flash their way into a fight, but that could have ended so badly. I actually think they're lucky to get away with even just losing a lot of health there. Nork goes for a kill. He's going to get the one headshot, but if he goes down, there's no more defense at the bomb site. 
He doesn't actually want back into the grenade. Good push, and he's going to get shot in the back, but that's still way better than it could have been. Bombs on the ground as Flame will pick up a headshot on Rez, leaving Probski in a one versus three, and he'll get that one kill. He is in a lot of trouble, though, and he'll go down to Flamey. 